This is Loch Lomond. Scotland's second most famous loch, partly because of a song. But why? And what does the song actually mean? The loch is 22.6 miles long and 190 metres deep in places. It's the largest inland stretch of water in Britain and sits across the geological fault line between the highlands and the lowlands of Scotland. Meaning it's in both and the landscape changes radically from end to end. It's wide and shallow down at the bottom and slim and deep at the top, a bit like an inland fjord. It's slap bang next to Ben Lomond, the furthest south of the Monroes, and the place that gives it its name. Ben Lomond means Beacon Mountain. It's part of a national park, along with the Trossachs, which sound like a nasty medical complaint. The loch has 22 islands that historically are said to have offered sanctuary to Mary Queen of Scots, Robert the Bruce and William Wallace. That's pretty much the full house. One of the islands is home to a mob of wallabies. I'm not kidding. In the 1940s, Fiona Gore, the Countess of Arran, is thought to have been the one who introduced the redneck wallabies to Inchconachan Island. And they're still there, roaming the place today. But as you've probably guessed, the most striking thing about the loch is the scenery. So what about that song? Loch Lomond, or the Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond? Well, no one actually knows for sure. There's never been a writer attributed to it. The historian Murray Pittock describes it as a Jacobite adaptation of an 18th century erotic song with the lover dying for his king and only taking the low road of death back to Scotland. In the song, there are two captured soldiers, one who's to be executed and the other who's due to be set free. Well, you'll tack the high road and I'll tack the low road and I'll be in Scotland for you. The high road is obviously a more standard mode of transportation and the low road is the warrior returning to his homeland after death. But me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. The song has been recorded by a lot of people and was recently used by Bear McCreary in the soundtrack to Outlander. But in 1979, the folk rock band Runrig recorded a version that really stuck. It became a big favourite with Scotland's rugby fans. And DJs are legally bound to play it at the end of every Scottish wedding, along with 500 Miles by the Proclaimers. I'll leave a link in the description. It's not hard to see how a place like this would inspire a song. And how in turn, the song could inspire a lot of visitors.